The Hughes flap is a very, very versatile flap and can be used on a number of different depth defects. The key indicator to require the use of a Hughes flap is the horizontal extent of the lower lid lesion. In this video we're using a different technique to the previous Hughes flap as the lesion is very shallow and on this basis because the patient has some lax skin in the lower lid rather than using the Hughes flap with a skin graft it's possible to do the Hughes flap with an advancement of the skin onto the Hughes flap. The first step is still to mark the edges of the basal cell carcinoma and then mark a 4mm margin around this to ensure a full excision. The next step is to extend two Bureau's triangles and the same vertical degree again as the excision and these two triangles will then make it very obvious how the skin is going to advance onto the Hughes flap. The next step is to excise the lesion and I still prefer cold steel to anything else. At one point I was keen to use the cutting cautery but I found that for excisions where previously there would be no confusion from the pathologist and I'd be getting clear margins, use of cutting cautery tended to cause a slight contraction of the collagen and I was having unexpected uh, results back from the histopathologists such that for lesions where I thought I'd had a very clear margin the results were coming back that the lesion was close to the edge and then yet subsequent further excision had a very low harvest. I therefore now use straightforward scalpel and scissors for all the excisions. Once the lesion's off it's nice to check anterior and posterior and check that you have excised what you thought you'd excised. The next step is to free the skin ready for it to be advanced and so the two bureau's triangles are excised from each side and then the skin is simply undermined to free it up and enable it to advance. The spring scissors are ideal for undermining and the plane you want to be in is subdermal and anterior to the orbicularis as it's only the skin you need to advance. Once you're in this plane it's very easy to advance the scissors. If you trip into the orbicularis you simply tend to cause a fair bit of bleeding and subsequent bruising. This undermining continues on both sides and the second bureau's triangle is trimmed off. The skin flap is then ready to be advanced. The creation of the Hughes flap is always the same. The inferior four millimeters need to be left behind in order to provide structural support to the upper eyelid and then once in the plane 
uh, posterior to the everted tarsal plate, but of course anterior to the non-everted plate, you simply trim off the full thickness and then make relieving sutures, relieving sutures, and then make relieving incisions at each end. You can then push back to reveal the conjunctiva and mullers. And then by tucking in between the conjunctiva and mullers with the closed scissors and pushing medially in this instance, you can create a path separating the conjunctiva and mullers absolutely from one side to the other. You then tuck the scissors back with one arm of the scissors or one blade of the scissors in this plane and the other blade out and then you can snip off the mullers leaving the conge intact. You don't want to do too much cautery at this stage as you want healthy vessels in the conjunctiva coming down. The Hughes flap is then sutured in place and interestingly in this video I'm showing the hard way to do it. It's much much easier to suture from the flap to the, uh, to the lid. Whereas here I've sutured the lid first and now show you why it's difficult to suture into the, the Hughes flap going towards the flap. Essentially even if you stabilise the tarsal plate it still tends to wobble and as the needle pushes towards it it doesn't quite have enough thickness so it tends to crumple. So I'm finally in the right place. And then curiously I do the same again. Um, the joys of being right-handed. Uh, ideally here I'd have backhanded the suture and passed it in the opposite direction. Here you can see how much more much much easier it is if you go from the uh, hues back out into the lid. So this is a 6 ovicral suture with two sutures attaching superiorly and inferiorly to the tarsal plate in the lid in exactly the same way as you would close any lid. And with these sutures then in place, the conjunctival edge is found in the fornix. This is picked up, and the easiest way to pick up the tarsus is to use the tip of the needle just to tuck in and lift the tarsal plate, at which point you can get hold of it very easily with the forceps, and place your sutures. These, this, I've only shown one suture there, but this obviously needs to be continued to close the, the conj fornix. The bureau's triangles are then closed as the initial part of advancing the skin. And I'm continuing here with the 6 ovicral. And with the bureau's triangles closed, the skin advances easily. And the key is to leave it about a millimetre short of where you eventually want it to be. The, the last uh, millimetre is uh, ideally just achieved through granulation. To suture the superior edge I'm using a 6-O-proline and this is simply passed in a running fashion through the superior edge of the skin taking a little bite of the 
Hughes flap at the tarsal into the tarsus and then tucking back into the skin effectively simply attacking suture tacking the advanced skin into position but as I say the key is not to bring this skin absolutely up to the new lid margin you want to leave it a millimeter short the advantage of a graft is that the Hughes flap can be opened at the three week point whereas with either a, a laissez-faire technique or with a skin advancement technique like this I prefer to leave the flap in place for between four to six weeks depending on how much tension is on the skin and of course depending on the level of vision the patient has in their other eye this of course determines how acceptable it is to them to have this eye closed the benefit in my opinion over advancing the skin is that it can give a superior cosmetic result grafts can give a very good result but sometimes they can be a little variable and sometimes they can be a little edematous this proline suture isn't knotted at either end but simply held down with a steri-strip and this normally keeps it in place for the initial week without too much problem after which it can be removed I open the hues as I said between four to six weeks